Hi guys welcome to my channel before starting subscribe and like the videos it really helps the content from this video are taken from the web novel and manga series of Mushoku Tensai Jobless Reincarnation now please enjoy the video. Part 6 and then 3 days passed, Silphy, Aisha, and Norn are all making uneasy faces, I declared that I wouldn't go to the Begarito continent, however, whether that is really fine like that, I don't know. I can't make the distinction, I may have declared it, but I'm still hesitating, there aren't all that many people I can consult with. One among them, Ellen Elias said this. I guess so, it's probably better for you to remain here. You. From those words, I understood Elin Elise's real intention. Ellen Elias San, could it be that you plan to go? Rudius. Silphie is my grandchild. Please allow me to pitch in and help for the sake of my grandchildren. It seems that letter seeking assistance arrived at her place as well. However, she says she will go. Even though there are those who will be left behind, what do you plan to do about escorting Princess Ariel? If it's while she's inside of the school, then there's almost no danger. Almost to the point that the need for an escort is stupid. No matter how low the danger is, it's for when the time comes to it, isn't it? No, the one who thinks about that is Ariel. Ellen Elias is escorting out of goodwill, there's no reason to restrain her. What are you going to do about Cliff? All separate from him, he might end up resenting me, but it can't be helped. Why don't you explain it to him? If you say it, I'm sure he'll understand. Ellen Elias quietly laughed. It wasn't her usual bewitching smile. It was a lonely smile. Cliff is a pure child. He has talent as well and faces forward. He has the potential of becoming Pope in the future. The love he feels towards me, it's a moment of getting lost in his feelings during his younger years, leaving it as such a case, it's for the best. Putting it that way is pitiful for Cliff. The doctrine of the Millish Church, is for them to love only a single partner. If, Ellen Elias disappears, Cliff's faith might be shaken. That guy is a man of heart, but if he were to lose his faith, I don't know what will happen to him. Also, and Ellen Elias said it in the end, the one who said for you to remain here is me. Please, at least let me do something like cover for you. Therefore, you'll leave things to me and it would be fine for you to wait at ease. At the time when we return, please show me my energetic great-grandchild. Okay. Those words which I was told were used to close this matter. It seems Elin Elise's feelings are something that will stand firm. Part 7 I consulted with Zenoba as well. Even after he heard that, his expression didn't change a bit. Is that so? If it's Shisho, then I'm sure you'll quickly resolve it and be able to return. He said that completely indifferently. Since I'll be waiting here as I continue with the research, I'll be wishing for a quick return. I thought you would say not to go or else that you would be coming along. Previously, the time when we separated at Sharon, he was clinging to me in tears. This time as well, I might have been wishing for something like that. However, Zenoba's words were the opposite. If Shisho desires a companion, then I won't turn it down, but, since I'm unfamiliar with journeying I might slow you down, besides. With a glance, Zenoba looked at Julie, it's not like I can bring her along on a long journey. Julie is still young. There's also the option of leaving her behind in the care of Ginger. If it comes down to that, the research will be delayed. If he leaves on a journey, he'll end up using his magic power down to the last drop, which is dangerous as well. Zenoba, I say, should I go? That is, something Shisho should decide. Something that I should decide. It sounded like words that were intended to push me away. Though I wanted to consult with him, and then Zenoba suddenly said it. However Shisho, there is just one thing I will say. HN, even if the father isn't looking, a child will be born. If you're worried, then you should go and during that time, I will take responsibility and watch over your wife. Zenoba's words had his actual feelings mixed into them. I see. I'm sure a king doesn't specifically oversee each of his wife and concubine's pregnancies himself after all. Of course, I always want to remain by Shisho's side though. I see, thank you Zenoba. Silphie isn't alone. Aisha is here, Ariel and the others as well. She's not alone. It's not like she's alone. Part 8 Should I go to the Begarito continent? Or should I not go? Ellen Elias said that she would go and I should wait. Zenoba said to leave things to him, go help and then return. I wonder what I should do. I guess I should go. What Zenoba said is quite right. Certainly, if the mother is healthy, then the child will naturally be born. Even if the father is or isn't there. No, there's no way that can be the case. I'm not a king or anything. It's already decided that it's better for the father to be there. Silphie said not to mind it and go, but it's her first childbirth, she should be uneasy, 
in reality, she should want to cry and shout at me not to go. Moreover, I said many terrible things about how I desired a child from Sylphie. If I were to speak of how much I actually wanted one, even I don't know myself. But, Sylphie properly received that and gave it to me. After that, she's pregnant and now I'm leaving on a journey. Wouldn't that be a betrayal? However, until now I feel like I've been putting off things with Paul and the others, putting priority on myself, thinking of curing my Ed and going to school. For this reason, this timing itself, shouldn't that be the reason I conduct myself and go to save my family? Wouldn't putting things off for the time when it came, balance it out? I don't know. I have a feeling I'll end up regretting it regardless of which I pick. Part 9 While I was worrying about it, it became the fourth day. The days where I couldn't sleep continued. Early morning, I couldn't get motivated to do my training and just passed time absent-mindedly in the entranceway. In this city, even summer is considerably cool. Especially in the early morning, when it's even a bit chilly. I was absent-mindedly watching the morning sunrise. Suddenly, I heard a voice from behind. After turning around, the entranceway was opened. The one standing there is Norn. She has the large bag I used during my adventurer days on her shoulder. Since the inside is completely packed, it's an appearance that gives the premonition of a long journey. However, because she's only 10 years old, it's almost like she's going on a picnic. I silently looked at her. Norn avoided my gaze awkwardly. It was the face one makes when they're found at the scene of a prank. Where are you going? Norn wasn't replying. I asked once more. Where are you going? Norn looked at me and then opened her mouth after deciding what to say. If Ni, Ni San isn't going, then I thought I would go. I looked at her seriously for a second time. Go, going, to the Beggarido continent I wonder. I look at Norn once more. Norn is small. Far too small. She's still 10 years old. The luggage she's prepared, it doesn't seem like she's prepared all the necessary things she needs at all. It seems she has money, but I wonder if she knows how to use it. Does she know the routes? Does she have a means to avoid danger? After she leaves this city, wouldn't she be abducted soon after? Norn, it's impossible for you. But, even though, Ni-san, Otto-san and Oka-san are having a difficult time, Norn's eyes with tears piling up were aimed towards me. Why? Why isn't Ni-san going to save them? Why? That is because my child is going to born. I have a family. Ni-san, even though you're very strong, even though you can make the journey, why? I can go on the journey. I won't say as well as Ellen Elias, but I came along as an adventurer for five years as well. I have a considerable amount of know-how. If I were to look up, there's still a ways to go, but I should have a reasonable amount of skill. Even without Rijard, I should be able to conquer the magic continent. That's right. I can do it. It's not about thinking about the choice if I'm going or not going. Just like Norn, even if she wants to go, she can't, but that's not the case for me. I have the ability. I have the ability to make a round trip from here to the Begarito continent. For this reason, Gisu sent a letter requesting assistance to me. Not to any other person, but me. Norn, I get it. Ni, Ni San, there are other people who will help me look after Sylphie. However, there's no one else who can assist them but me. There's no one else other than me. I'll travel to the Begarito continent and proceed to the labyrinth city Lapan. I'm the guy who can resolve the problems that happen there. I'll go. Norn, is it fine if I leave things with the house to you? Norn's face was suddenly shining. And then, soon after she tightly closed her lips. She nodded with a serious face, yes. Don't fight with Aisha and please help things with Sylphie. Yes, all right, good girl. I feel I'm going to do something bad to Sylphie. Towards the child that is being born as well. It could be that she gets tired of my courtesies. No that's wrong. Here I need to have faith. I'll go to the Begarito continent. There, I'll save my family. Right, I made my decision. That's it guys thank you for watching subscribe if you want more and don't forget to like the videos.